Hey everyone, this is Nick and with the recent release of Linux Mint Una 20.3 I think it's time we dive in back into Linux Mint because it's been a while since I used it or since I used Cinnamon. So first we're gonna take a look at what's new in Linux Mint 20.3. But then we're also going to assess if Linux Mint is still the best distribution to recommend for beginners. Just like I can only recommend today's sponsor if you still have servers running CentOS 8. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare and the day has finally come. CentOS 8 is now officially end of life. So it's not getting any patches for any new vulnerabilities in any of its packages. Unless you subscribe to Tuxcare's extended lifecycle support service and get all these patches straight from Tuxcare instead of getting them from the distro. This means that your systems will stay safe and compliant with all your security requirements while you plan for a migration to another system. Running without support gets expensive very quickly. Check out the calculator available in the Tuxcare website to get an idea of just how expensive it can be. As the log4j issues have shown, being at risk and being attacked is not something that happens in the movies or to others. All organizations need a strategy to stay safe. So click the link in the description below to subscribe to Tuxcare's extended lifecycle support service and make sure that you can migrate off CentOS 8 at your own pace. Okay, so let's begin with the new stuff in Linux Mint 20.3. First, there is a new default theme. It's not a huge departure from the previous one, but it makes a few interesting choices. The title bars now have rounded corners, because of course they do. Everything needs to be rounded in 2022, apparently, but I, I'm not complaining. I like it. The title bar buttons are a bit bigger now, and their hover zone has been expanded, so they're easier to click. That's a nice improvement. These buttons have also taken on a more Windows-like appearance with icons that will be familiar to anyone coming from Windows. Now, some people might hate this, but I think it leans into the more beginner-friendly distro image that Mint already has, and I think it's a good thing. Basically, Windows users have one less reason to be mystified by these buttons. In terms of widgets and GTK theme, Mint also made some changes. The green accent color is still here, and I still find it not great but it's been toned down quite a bit. The toolbar buttons don't use green anymore, nor do the menu items in the still pervasive menu bars. The file manager sidebar also doesn't use a black background anymore. Generally, the default gray has also been made lighter compared to the previous one. I personally think that this new theme is an improvement. I think it's more sober, I think it's more elegant, I think it's more modern, but it does make unfocused windows harder to differentiate from the active window, which is not great. The older theme is still available in the repos under the Mint Themes Legacy package, and you can still change colors in the appearance settings. If, like me, you've been traumatized by the green start button and the wallpaper of Windows XP, and you don't want to see green anymore on any UX element ever. Or if you just want a dark mode by default. Speaking of dark mode, Mint now supports it properly, and has made some of their default apps dark by default, mostly the ones that display media. Celluloid, the video player, Hypnotics, the IPTV player, XViewer, the image viewer, and Pix, the photo manager, all sport a dark theme by default, even if you stick with the light theme from Mint. This can be configured per app in their respective preferences. Also to be noted, the title bars will now automatically adapt to the dark theme you picked, so no need to change to a dark theme for GDK and for the window title bars, these will adapt. Mint 20.3 also improved on the Cinnamon desktop, which is normal because that's basically the one that they develop and they have the flagship distro for it. First is the calendar integration. In the calendar applet, you can now see events from multiple calendars using their attributed color, so you can get a quick heads up of what your day is going to look like. This feature uses Evolution Data Server, so it will integrate with GNOME Calendar, the default app that Mint ships, or with Calendar in your online accounts, like Google, Nextcloud, Exchange, or Outlook. Oh yeah, put some Microsoft inside of your Linux, because they are not ashamed of putting more Linux inside of their Microsoft. Nemo, the file manager, now correctly handles moving or copy-pasting files with the same name. Before, you could replace one file with another, or skip that file, but now you can automatically rename the files to avoid a conflict. Window animations have been simplified and tuned, although I can't say I noticed much of a difference myself. The goal seems to be to rebase Mutter, the window manager, to a newer version, because Mutter is developed by GNOME and they probably just apply a few patches to it to make it work on Mint. 
The idea behind that is to get these effects being easier to manage or to improve or to add, but I think it might also help them for the Wayland transition if they use a newer version of that window manager, which is also a compositor. There are also some smaller options for various applets. You can now disable scrolling over the workspace switcher to change workspaces, the notification applets can now be configured to hide the number of notifications, and the window list applets can now remove the labels. Cinnamon also has improved support from right to left languages, and they also improved Nvidia Optimus support to better respect an application's preference to not use the default GPU to start. The default applications also have received a lot of updates. First, there is a new application called Thingy. I guess that's the only kind of name you can end up with when your creativity has been completely obliterated by month being confined inside of your home. It serves as a document manager, which means it will list all your recent and favorite documents like PDFs, but also LibreOffice documents of all types. It keeps track of your reading progress as well. So instead of looking at your file manager and trying to remember where you put that spreadsheet, you can just open Thingy and find it right there. Hypnotics, the IPTV player, now has search to find channels, but also specific movies and series. The Sticky Notes app now lets you search through your notes. The title of each note is now embedded into the body of the note, which looks much better, and you can change the text size from the notes toolbar. Xreader, the PDF and document viewer, can now read manga properly using right to left mode, and using the arrow keys moves the pages in the right direction. Pressing the left key moves the document forward. The menu bar can also be hidden in Xreader and Xed, the text editor. Hitting the Alt key will bring it back. In full screen mode, the toolbar of Xreader will also no longer be shown, so you can enjoy what you're reading without distraction. Other smaller things include the system reports, only reporting once a day instead of every hour, which should save battery life, and the web apps manager can now show which browser is used for each web app. So, while Mint 20.3 is an incremental update, I think it also sets things up for the next major release, which will be based on Ubuntu 22.04, the new LTS version of Ubuntu. In the meantime, is Linux Mint still the best distribution to recommend for beginners when other distributions have moved more aggressively, like Fedora or Zorin OS, to be more user-friendly and to offer differentiating features faster than what Cinnamon has been doing? Well, Mint still offers one of the most complete experiences for newcomers. Let's face it, most people come from Windows, and Mint's default experience is close, really close. Everything you might want to configure has a graphical app to do so, and it offers a wide range of options to configure everything that's not exactly how you're used to. It comes with a backup tool, a driver manager, power statistics, preferences for virtually anything you might want to change. In that, it still retains an edge on anything based on GNOME, for beginners, especially beginners coming from Windows. Not only is it more familiar than GNOME at first glance for somebody coming from Windows, but it's also far more configurable. It gives you a lot more power, and it doesn't hide options or things that you might expect to find in a desktop environment in OS behind command line or extensions. Everything is right at your fingertips. Where Mint falls behind, in my opinion, is in the software manager. While it does its job, it's far less user-friendly, and it's also far less nice to look at than GNOME software or the elementary OS app center. It looks dated, and mostly it's not super enticing for users to try and look for various applications they might want. It also doesn't seem to support choosing the package format that you want, like for example having a drop-down menu with Deb or Flatpak, but that's not really something that beginners should concern themselves with. Mint bases itself on Ubuntu 20.04, which means that the apps in its repos are outdated, like really outdated. The apps in there are a few versions behind, and that's something that Flatpak solves. I think that to remain user-friendly and to allow users to benefit from applications that are actually up-to-date, men should start working on better Flatpak integration in their store, so users can still get up-to-date apps on their very stable LTS base. Or they could work on implementing snaps. I heard Linux Mint loves those snap packages. Apart from that, I don't really see anything that can compete with Mint for beginners still. It doesn't adopt the latest tech, which means less potential issues. It's stable. It's graphically complete. And while its looks aren't really my jam with the green and gray and the menu bars, it's still legible, easy to use and customizable. 
So for now, Linux Mint does keep its crown, in my opinion. If you want customizability and familiarity, you go with Mint. If you want better looks out of the box at the price of a few graphical utilities, you go with Zorin. But Mint is going to have to work on supplying fresher and newer versions of applications to their users if they want to remain user-friendly enough. People are getting used to have applications updated all the time with their phones. They will not accept having apps that are two years old. It's just not a good experience. So either they have to implement Flatpak support or, or snaps or app images or just maintain their own repo with up-to-date apps in them. But using the LTS repos from Ubuntu for all the applications is, in my opinion, not a good experience for beginners or for users in general. That's not too hard to solve, though. So this video was made possible by Slimbook. And if you don't know about Slimbook, they are based in Valencia, Spain, and they make Linux laptops, Linux desktops, from the biggest all-in-ones and gaming PCs to the smallest ultrabooks and even some cheap laptops that are pretty well built. I only use their stuff nowadays. I have their desktop, I have their Slimbook Pro X14 laptop, I have their RGB keyboard. I can only recommend them. So if you need a new device running Linux out of the box, check the link in the description below and get your new laptop or desktop from them. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to give it a like, to give it a subscribe, to give it a notification bell. Just do everything that you need to do for YouTube to push my videos onto your face because you don't want YouTube to decide what you're going to watch, right? And if you want to help support the channel, you can also join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. Both get access to the same perks, which are a weekly Patreon cast where I talk about Linux, technology and personal stuff and the channel and the office and whatever. And you also get to choose which videos I will work on with a voting system. All the links are in the description. If you want to support me, just click on one of these. So thank you guys for watching and I guess you will see me in the next one. Bye!